NBC 15 News at 11 starts now. Now at 11, a popular resort in Wisconsin Dells says its computer system has been hacked, potentially putting your personal information at risk. Plus, police need your help to find a missing woman. And a city on edge, the capital of Belgium, is on lockdown as they deal with the highest level of a terror threat. Good morning, everyone. I'm Ashley Matthews. And I'm Christine Bellport. A chilly start to our work week with rain on the way later this week. Yeah, and a little bit of a warm-up, too, for Thanksgiving, it's looking like. Let's Good. head on over to Charlie for a look at the weather for today. Uh, it does look like we'll warm things up through the week, but still pretty chilly for today and tomorrow with high temperatures 4 to 6 degrees below average, 35 is the expected high this afternoon. The average high is 40 for this time of year. Westerly winds 5 to 10 miles per hour. But we will have partly cloudy skies, at least a few breaks in the clouds here and there as we move through the afternoon hours. Mostly cloudy skies tonight. Another day uh, for tomorrow, very similar to today. I'll talk about that. Plus, we'll look ahead to that all-important holiday forecast. We'll do that all in about 10 minutes. All right, Charlie, thank you. New at 11, a data breach has been reported at a popular resort in Wisconsin Dells. Wilderness Resort said hackers got into their computer system. They say guests who use their debit or credit card to pay for hotel reservations or to make purchases at the hotel between March 9th and June 8th of this year, you may be affected. So the resort says they are working with investigators and are providing resources for potential victims. For a link to those resources, please head to NBC15.com and click on this story. Also new at 11, Mequon police are looking for a missing 53-year-old woman. Jacqueline Rinaldo was reported missing Saturday after she did not show up for a dinner appointment. She was last heard from Wednesday. Take a look. She has brown hair, brown eyes. She's about 5'3 and weighs 150 pounds. Police have checked her home and found her personal items, including her wallet, ID, and car there. But no signs of foul play or self-harm have been detected. Authorities say a hunter from Alaska has been fatally shot in Columbia County. It happened near Portage yesterday morning. The DNR says the man was lifting a loaded rifle to another hunter in a tree stand when the gun fired and struck the 39-year-old man on the ground. Officials say there have been no other fatalities involving weapons since the deer gun season started on Saturday. Making news around the world, the Belgian capital Brussels is on security lockdown for a third straight day today under the highest level of terror threat. This as the manhunt continues for one of the Paris attackers. NBC's Bill Neely reports from Brussels. The heart of Brussels, normally packed with tourists and commuters, now filled with armed police and troops. Warning that an attack might be imminent, they moved in overnight to half a dozen districts. There were more than 20 raids in all, 21 people arrested. Their main target was the Belgian ISIS militant Saleh Abdesalam, one of the Paris attackers who fled to the Brussels area. They didn't get him. They fear he might have an explosive suicide belt. The man who drove him here said he'd been wearing a thick jacket. His brother went on Belgian TV to say he believed Saleh had pulled out of the Paris attacks at the last minute. It's not my hope, he says. It's my belief. Salah is clever. Brussels is in lockdown for a third day. Children aware of the terror threat. They are afraid. Children were crying. In Paris, the French president visited the concert hall, scene of the deadliest attack, with Britain's prime minister. Two cities today still reeling from the attacks. And remember, this city is the headquarters of NATO. Some staff there have been told to stay at home. It's also the virtual capital of the European Union, a union of half a billion people. But it's also the city from where hundreds of fighters have left to fight for ISIS in Syria. So they have good reason here to be worried about another terror attack. Back to you. Making news right now, a Janesville man accused of trying to kill a woman with a hammer is in court. 28-year-old Michael Hadley is having his preliminary hearing. Police say he attacked the woman inside his Janesville home last month. They say the two knew each other. Now, the woman told police Hadley repeatedly hit her in the head with the hammer and told her he was going to kill her. Now, the woman's two-year-old daughter came into the room and distracted him. Both the woman and her daughter were able to make their escape. Police caught Hadley a short time later. 
A man is dead following an early morning rollover crash here in Madison. It happened just after 2 off Stoughton Road on the Cottage Grove exit ramp. Police say the driver struck a road sign, then was thrown from the car when it rolled. There was no one else in the car at the time. No word yet on what exactly caused the car to go off the road. More than 100 fans were ejected from Saturday's Badger game against Northwestern. UW-Madison police say fans threw snowballs and ice at each other and onto the field. 110 fans were ejected and 50 of those were for throwing snow or ice. Police say 25 calls were made for first aid. Several fans suffered bloody noses and other injuries after being hit with snowballs. Now to our Decision 2016 coverage where Donald Trump is stirring up yet another controversy. NBC's national correspondent Peter Alexander reports. In the wake of the Paris attacks, Donald Trump is only getting stronger, defiantly vowing to crack down on Syrian refugees and American Muslims. I don't want to close mosques. I want to surveil mosques. I want mosques surveilled. The heated rhetoric underscoring anti-Islamic tensions nationwide. About a dozen protesters, some armed and masked, lining up outside a Texas mosque this weekend. Trump, the GOP frontrunner, maintaining his 10-point lead over Ben Carson, according to a new national poll. Marco Rubio, the only other candidate in double digits. But as Trump remains strong, once again, controversy has followed. Trump calling for a database of Syrian refugees. We have no idea who these people are. When the Syrian refugees are going to start pouring into this country, we don't know if they're ISIS. We don't know if it's a Trojan horse. And Trump wouldn't rule out a registry for all Muslims in the U.S. Rival John Kasich blasted that as unacceptable. I flat out condemned the idea that we were going to have Muslims register. Trump's also promising he'd bring back waterboarding as a form of interrogation for suspected terrorists. I think waterboarding is peanuts compared to what they do to us. They don't use waterboarding over there. They use chopping off people's heads. And defending his unsubstantiated claim, he saw, quote, thousands and thousands of people in New Jersey celebrating the collapse of the Twin Towers on 9-11. There were people that were cheering uh, in the other side of New Jersey where you have large Arab populations. They were cheering as the World Trade Center came down. Police and city officials say there's no evidence that ever occurred. And that was Peter Alexander reporting. Happening today, the Capitol Christmas tree is being set up in our Capitol Rotunda. This year's tree is from Rhinelander. It arrived at the Capitol last week. So looking forward to the holiday season, aren't you? I just I love I, it. Yeah, you know, it was cute last year, I think, was the theme was um, different kids from around area schools oh. made little decorations on the Capitol tree. Okay. I just loved going and looking at those. Yeah. And I think the theme this year is sports. Oh, very nice. So it nice. should be pretty good. Yeah, especially because someone sitting up on this desk is going to Lambeau Field <laughs> on Thanksgiving. <laughs> I'll take a nice picture of Brett Favre, put it up there. That is good. Aaron Rodgers, too, because, you know, he's number one okay. now. Yeah, there you on go. On the team.